Look around your room right now. What do you see? Are the walls barren, original colors still showing since you moved in? Or is it covered in posters, paintings, sketches, drawings, maybe a diploma for a celebration? Or as a joke, do you stack personal memorabilia on shelves or save that for books? Maybe both. Maybe action figures if you're some sort of nerd. What I'm getting at is that your room can say a lot about you. The way it's decorated, the way it's organized, even the placement of your furniture. Think of how a stranger would react if they walked in right now, with permission of course. What could they discern about you? It's an easy practice to learn because you've been doing it for years now if you play video games. We've stepped in countless homes and studied their lives by just inspecting the decor. The freedom games give when they take us into a character's home allows us to see how our hero lives off duty, maybe after many years or before a big journey. In this video, I'd like to go through some of my favorite character homes in video games and speak briefly on what they say about the character in general. Some will be long, some will be short. Also, homes don't just have to show the personality of who's living in it, it can also reveal something about the person visiting it. What I'm saying is not all homes featured will be about their owners. Also, also, I'm going to bring up how these homes work to demonstrate gameplay mechanics yet to be used and how they tease their respective narratives. I'm not really here to prove a point, more just show the work put in whenever the designer takes us to these types of locations. Let's get started with Uncharted 4, Nate's house. This is the whole reason I decided to make this video because I thought this section was done so well. Alright, so this area starts off with Drake surveying some new plans for a good old fashioned treasure hunt, which he promptly stuffs into a filled up cabinet. Oh jeez, looks like Drake has been thinking of the good old days. When we move around the attic, he clearly has. What follows is a great little walk through history as you interact with trinkets from past games stuffed away inside the attic. I also think it's clever that Drake put all these mementos away from Elaine, kinda hinting that he had never given up on the adventuring life, when Elaine put it by the wayside in order to move on. You get to look through old notes written from past characters and engage in a violent shootout with cardboard targets. Oh god, turn it off! Soon, Elaine calls baby boy down for dinner. Yeah, yeah, I'll be right there. Oh shit, dude, hide the weed. We get to see how lived in their house is. Clothes strewn about, bed unmade, it really feels like home. The fact that you also get to look through old photos for some quick exposition is genius. Well, congratulations, guys. This fridge makes me hungry. <laughs> also the PlayStation. Great callback. Drake's gonna play video games? Drake has no idea what he's talking about, that idiot! Playing with guns all day never prepared you for Mario Kart, huh? Huh? This section hits all the points for me. It wonderfully shows us exposition of what we missed through old photographs and notes. It shows Drake and Elaine's outgoing personality through the state of their home. We also get a bit of narrative foreshadowing about Drake's reminiscing the old days up in the attic. Past, present, and future. Past, present, future? Eh, moving on. Ah, Underdale. Blundertale, ahoy. There's a lot I like about this game, one thing being that you can visit the homes of all the central characters. It was a hard choice, but I wanted to focus on Toriel's house as it was the first home you encounter in the game. A lot can be told about Toriel visually through the house and throughout the player interactions. The entire home is painted in warm, unsaturated colors, which gives it a very familial feeling. It feels like you're stepping into Grandma's cottage. Give me a break! One interesting difference is that Toriel's bedroom is the only room in the house painted in blue, kind of giving off a lonely vibe. Oh no. I also like the layout of the living room here. Big comfy chair, straddled right next to the fireplace with a big old bookcase. Great reading spot. <laughs> There's also a bit of foreshadowing story-wise going on here as we catch glimpses of the dangerous golden flower and the hilarious water sausages. I'll catch you wieners in waterfall. We also have the start of the mirror metaphor, which is wonderfully paid off at the end of the game. I'll let you guys find that out for yourself. Also, we get the rooms under renovation sign, which hints at the disconnect between Toriel and Asgore. Oh yeah, and the children's room. You can discover that this place has been used often by just looking at all the shoes. A lot of kids must have fallen down here. I'm sure they're okay. Also, the ability to sleep and wake up with a slice of pie is great. This home starts with a charming tour and ends with an epic battle. A great way to set up story, show character, and start you on your journey. Guys, I didn't mean to. Bioshock Infinite. House. This one's a toughie, because I don't really want to go into spoilers, but I really like the presentation of this place. But I'll be careful. First off, it's hard to classify this as either a house or a laboratory. I mean, it says laboratory on the front, but this doesn't really look like a laboratory. There's chalkboards in the kitchen. Instead, I kind of like the idea that the Lutesses were so preoccupied with their work that they converted their home into a laboratory. Also, I love how their work is literally consuming the building. Chalkboards and machinery strewn throughout. Large wires snake into every room, and my personal favorite, the removal of their second floor just to fit their entire device in there. What the? Crazy! There's some voxophones in here that hint at the story's ending while also progressing the narrative of the level. And I love that the Lutessa's idea of a welcome mat is essentially a large, YOU DIE IN HERE sign. We'll see about that. Metro 2033, Art Hume's Room. Jesus Christ, I love this game so much. I should probably make a video about it one day. Anywho. 
I didn't know what home to focus on in this game. The makeshift homes in the metro are all crammed together with whatever planks and vodka bottles they had lying around. I was thinking about talking about one of the specific cities in the metro, but that's a lot of ground to cover. However, the theme of ramshackled crammed places extends to Archum's room. Archum, the protagonist, lives in this little tiny shack in the metro, and you can tell he really lives in it. Dirty dishes, books piled up by the wayside, candles lit. Candles that you can also extinguish. I'm sure that'll be helpful to know later. We get a map of the metro, signifying our impending journey. Hey look! The book this entire game is based on! Let's just throw that out. We get little insights into Archim's own life. A guitar you can strum. This thingy, which I'm sure has to do with science. And most importantly, all the pictures posted on the walls. These show Archim's intrigue for the past and his fascination of the outside world. You know, kind of creating this whole sense of wonder before we finally step outside and are greeted with- Oh okay, no! Please don't go back! Home, home. Big home. Tell story. Get award. Half-Life 2. City 17 Apartments. This one is pretty small, but the brief time you spend here says a lot about what you're fighting for in Half-Life 2. The City 17 Apartments are tight, crummy little rundown rooms that are littered with trash and downtrodden civilians. Constant raids by the Civil Protection have been getting to the apartment's inhabitants. Just look at the body posture of these people and how they react to you and the Civil Protection. Talking to the civilians reveals a really depressing lifestyle, constantly on the lookout for harassment or raids. Sometimes I dream about cheese. No! We even see this happen and participate in one. It shows the difficult lifestyle that humans now have to submit to, giving you a taste of a larger cause that you can fight for later. The area also ends with a fantastic escape scene as civil production chases you across hallways and rooftops. Don't shoot! I'm a scientist! Mass Effect 2. Normandy Cabin. I don't know. Models look pretty cool. Also, did anyone know that there was a bathroom behind here? Insane! Stardew Valley. Villagers homes. I'm speaking in general here. There's a lot of homes in the game for every social link. I mean, the character. You can interact with a lot of the objects in people's homes to get an understanding of who they are. You also need to raise your relationship high enough to enter the bedrooms of most of these characters, which adds a little gameplay aspect to inspecting these homes and learning about the villagers. The game has a gifting system to raise the villagers' relationship meters, and if you inspect everyone's homes, you can have an easier time picking out gifts for them. Hmm, Mega Muscles Magazine. <laughs> I got a video for you, Alex. Fuck you. It's a globe! Hey! There's Stardew Valley! File for divorce! The hell did I find? Needless to say, I think stepping into these homes can reveal a lot about the characters in Stardew Valley. And isn't that what life's all about? That and growing the largest pumpkin! <laughs> hey, thanks for watching my video. So yeah, video game homes. I only put hey. because I wanted to keep this video short. But please let me know what homes you think show character. I know I missed a bunch, so I'm interested in seeing y'all's answers. Maybe then I can compile them into a part two or something.